I just bought over four kilos of e-waste for just 40 Australian dollars. That's around 25 USD. While up in Brisbane for a holiday, I visited a locally run e-waste business. While relatively small in size, occupying just a few sheds, it didn't disappoint in what it offered. While accepting e-waste donations and processing of scrap, they also sell a portion of working devices to the public, which isn't something I've seen before. They had three boxes filled with phones and tablets I had to dig through. I believe these were unprocessed units, but I was allowed to go through them anyway. I was filming this on my phone, so you'll have to excuse the camera quality. Google Pixel? Oh, I fixed one of these before. I forget what they're called, but they're from Motorola. That's a uh, five. Oh, that's an iPod Touch. Oh, it's an S7 Edge. Oh, no, it's just an S7. Ooh, S9. While these boxes were mostly filled with older model phones, there were a few newer ones scattered throughout. After looking through the phone containers, I went to the outdoor area to look through the bins, finding myself an iPad and iPod. Even in the hour or so I was there, people continued to drop off more phones, one of which was a Galaxy S21 Ultra. I found its case in a bin nearby. Everything was packaged up for the aeroplane flight back home. Now that we're back in the studio, we can unbox everything and take a closer look at what I say from e-waste. The first package is just a few mini DV tapes I wanted for a camcorder I own. The remainder of things are of most interest, like an iPod 7th generation and the packages containing all the phones and iPad. This is everything I got for my $40. A good array of items, some old, some new. Some smashed or missing parts, while others complete. It's up to us to test each device, find out any issues and see just how many we can fix up and get working. The best finds of this lot are the Galaxy S21 Ultra, S9, S8 Plus, Google Pixel and iPod 7th generation. We did get some iPhones too, including an iPhone 8, 7 and SE. However, the Apple devices have a high chance of being locked to Apple's iCloud server, preventing their reuse, but we'll have to see. It's now time to see what powers up. I have pre-charged most of these to save time. The only phone that had charge when I found it was the S21 Ultra. Its screen just briefly flickers green when the power button is pressed. But with just a bit of charging, we already have some promising results. What isn't so promising is the iPad first generation which screen just repetitively flickers when connected to a charger. For the Apple devices that didn't switch on, I'll use this JCC2 adapter to get the charging current readout and device information if a device powers on. The first device, an iPod Touch 5, was just flat and powered on to a passcode screen. The iPod Touch 6 next to it draws almost no current when connected, indicating a major fault. The SE draws current and powers on, with the JC box identifying the phone's serial and model number, but it appears to have a dead screen and be boot looping. The second last phone is marked as an SE on the back, but is actually an iPhone 5 in a modified case. It draws almost an amp and doesn't power on. The last device is another iPod Touch 6. This one is inside of a scanner case, meaning it likely would have been used by a warehouse worker or something along those lines. It's crushed at the top with a shattered screen like the other iPod. It was also stuck in its case, requiring some persuasion to come free. Not only are both iPods damaged alike, but they have the same engraving on the back, and the MDM sticker indicates it's MDM locked. Both of these would have been used in identical cases. As for functionality, it draws current unlike its partner, but still doesn't switch on. Moving along to the newest device found at this eWay Center, the Galaxy S21 Ultra. It's in good condition, other than the two small cracks to the screen. That small amount of damage has taken this phone out of commission. Judging by the sticker residue on the back, I'd say this was likely a company phone. An employee probably broke it and was given another phone, this one being sent for scrap. It's wasteful, but things like this happen every day. Its screen simply flashes green when switched on. 
The back is somewhat loose, so maybe they've performed data recovery on it. I'll place it on my heat plate regardless to soften the remainder of the adhesive. I could just pry away without heating it, but would likely crack the back panel if I did so. Inside, there's no obvious indication anyone's been working on it. The new display comes with a frame attached, so all the internals will need to be removed and transferred to the new display assembly. I have repaired a Galaxy S21 Ultra before, so if you want a more in-depth process of a display replacement, I suggest watching that video. The motherboard looks like new, with no liquid or physical damage. There's still a few more components to take out, like the front-facing camera, vibration motor, upper antenna, speaker, charge port, and battery. The battery being the hardest thing to remove in the entire phone, requiring some alcohol and some decent prying. With our new display assembly on hand, it's time to get the phone reassembled. Oddly, the antenna lines are the wrong colour, but that doesn't really matter. With the internals back in place, it's time for some new adhesive to go onto the back panel before it's reinstalled on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Once firmly pressed down into place, it's time for a test. As I suspected, the only issue with the phone was a bad screen. All it needs now is a reset. With its plastic protective film removed, it's time to fix up the other Samsung, this Galaxy S8 Plus, which will undergo a similar treatment as the S21 Ultra. It needs a new display, so everything needs to be transferred across to that new display assembly. This new display costs 150 Australian dollars, or around 100 US. While that's a significant amount of the device's value, considering they sold me each phone for just $2.50, I think it's worth the repair. With all the components installed into the new display assembly, the back can be reattached to this Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. It's time for a quick test before I remove the plastic screen protector. The last Samsung device we're going to attempt to revive is this S7. I grabbed it as its screen looks good, but on closer inspection it's got some small cracks in the corner. The back panel was already ripped off, however I removed the expanded battery before taking it home on an aeroplane, as I didn't think airport security would be too pleased. Now that I have it in some proper light, this poor S7 looks a bit too far gone, with severe water damage and corrosion. I tried a battery, but had no luck. We can't win them all. This S7 belonged in that e-way center. As for Apple devices, this is the SE that we previously tried to power up. It seems to be boot looping, but considering it's iCloud unlocked and 64 gigabytes, let's see if we can fix it. We'll start by opening it up, being sure to disconnect the hidden software pad Touch ID cable. Inside, we can see the battery has expanded, spicy pillow style. This will be why the phone is boot looping. Unfortunately, I don't have an SE battery on hand, so while this will be an easy fix, I can't do it today. I will, however, attach a working display, so we can see the device boot looping. The boot loop is caused by the phone's design to switch on when connected to power. As the battery doesn't work, and the phone cannot sustain itself from the charger alone, it shuts off, repeating this over and over. Some of the easiest fixes of phones in this lot were simply resetting the phone to factory settings. This iPhone 5S is iCloud unlocked, but locked with a passcode. Resetting it in iTunes will restore functionality. I did purchase a replacement display for this phone, but didn't get time to install it for the video. The Google Pixel not only didn't have any physical damage, but it came reset and ready to go. Instead of trying to resell it, someone threw it away. So this is it, a mega lot of e-waste with some mega scores. 
While some devices were rightfully sent for recycling, others had little or nothing wrong with them. The lot consisted of a working iPod 7th generation 120GB with an expanded battery, an iPhone 5C 16GB working and in decent condition, an iPhone 5S 32GB working but needs a new display, an iPhone SE 64GB which needs a new battery and display, a Google Pixel 1 in perfect working condition, an unknown Oppo phone that powers on but is passcode locked, requiring a password to reset. Hopefully I can reflash the OS to remove it. A Blackberry torch which I saved purely as I wanted one but it holds little value. A Galaxy S9 found in its current condition that works perfectly and is in great shape. A Galaxy S8 Plus owned by the same person as the S9. It required a new display and battery to bring back to life. The best find of all was the Galaxy S21 Ultra which needed nothing more than a new display. There were a few lock devices that included an iPhone 4, iPod 5, iPhone 7, 8 and 5C. There was also 5 totally dead devices which consisted of an iPhone 5, 2 iPod touches, a Galaxy S7 and an iPad 1. Overall we managed to save quite a number of devices and while some were too far gone, most were repairable or still perfectly working. It never amazes me what people throw out. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the TechLot playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.